We have new information this morning on the case of a missing man in Prosser. It's now being treated as a criminal investigation. Family members reported 22-year-old Preston Yanni missing on Sunday. On Tuesday, his burnt-out car was found in this gravel pit outside of Sunnyside. The tow truck driver noticed human remains in the trunk and called police. Yakima County's coroner says he's still collecting DNA and dental records to take to Seattle to figure out who was inside the car. A 21-year-old woman has been found just a quarter mile from the spot where she went missing. The family of Rochelle Klontz reported her missing after she was last seen at the Kentry Mercantile just outside of Pasco. The Franklin County Sheriff's Department says Klontz is healthy with no injuries. We begin this morning with some breaking news out of Yakima. A 30-year-old woman is found dead inside her own home on the 300 block of North St. Hilaire Road in Yakima. Deputies arrived at the home last night after her husband, who had been out of town for several days, called police because he hadn't had contact with her in the last few days. Deputies say they found Desiree Sunford dead inside her home. She had suffered multiple gunshot wounds. The investigation is ongoing. A Yakima man convicted of trying to sell drugs will spend 10 years in prison. Jose Naranjo Lozano was busted by undercover DEA agents last year for trying to sell them five pounds of methamphetamine. The 24-year-old pleaded guilty to conspiracy to distribute that drug. And in more local news now, the Hanford cleanup effort is once again getting the attention of the White House. U.S. Energy Secretary Ernest Moniz was in the Tri-Cities for his first tour of the site. His visit comes days after a Hanford watchdog said the feds aren't doing enough to inspect the waste at Hanford. Secretary Moniz promised a plan to get rid of waste safely. He's also confident new radioactive tanks will be built by 20. I have customers coming in all the time that I've never seen before. I mean, occasionally I'll walk by somebody and I'll think that I smell it. Despite the obvious rise in marijuana use since the drug became legal, once it starts to sell in stores, state lawmakers want to put a 25% tax on the drug. If you were to buy a 40 sack of marijuana and the government put their hand in it, you would get back a $10 bag of marijuana. The Washington State Liquor Control Board will regulate the production and distribution of marijuana. The State Office of Financial Management estimates the measure could raise $560 million a year in taxes. Tax rates are going to be ridiculous if they can even put in place a dispensary. Now that it is legal for adults to carry up to an ounce of pot here in Washington, Tim Adams, co-owner of Hippie Smoke Shop, has noticed a spike in local crime smashed up mailboxes and are doing Drano bombs in mailboxes in, in the area of Kennewick. A young Tri-Cities marijuana smoker prefers to keep his identity anonymous. We'll call him Alejandro. Alejandro agrees even if it is legal for him to smoke, the new law won't be making the community any safer. Because now it's not that they're trying to find pot, it's they're trying to find that access that that excessive amount of pot that's bringing in crime to the Tri-Cities. Since it's now legal to smoke marijuana here in Washington, drug recognition experts in Franklin County have seen about a 50% increase in the number of drug-related DUI callouts countywide. A lot of people are very surprised to realize that you can be impaired on uh, illegal drugs and on, on uh, medication that's been prescribed by your doctor. Corporal Gordon Thomason is also a certified drug recognition expert and says marijuana DUIs are just as serious as driving while drunk. It doesn't matter if you're on uh, impaired on drugs or alcohol, you're impaired and you can get a DUI for either way. Now that it's legal to be high and kind of have it, people are going to, of course, people are going to abuse the right. And the solution? Simple. Be responsible when they're taking their medication and or drugs, and if it's including marijuana. You'll get a record, and then what happens? You go to prison. Go to school. Lindsay Adams, Action News in the Tri-Cities. A Burlington Northern freight train derailed into the Wind River shortly after noon. We have two locomotives that derailed, one of which is in the, uh, in the river. And we have about anywhere from uh, four to six cars that are derailed. The Hot Springs County Sheriff says only two engineers were aboard the locomotive and both were able to climb out of the train uninjured. The sheriff says a boulder the size of a tractor caused the derailment. All the rain we've had, it has slid down onto the track. The locomotive collided with it and uh, went into the river. 
a derailment to the river. The second locomotive derailed with it. Diesel fuel and oil are leaking into the Wind River, but Thermopolis City administrators say the town's water supply will not be affected. The town will operate on wells and a backup tank until the spill is cleaned up. Hot Springs County residents say they've never seen anything like this. Crazy. I actually raft this canyon. I guide it, so it's it's pretty amazing. I, I hope it doesn't affect the rafting. Police say that this is the third train they know of that is derailed in this canyon. Lindsay Adams, News 13 in the Wind River Canyon. Vicodin, uh, Oxycontin. Hydrocodones and um, methamphetamine. I used to sell myself for drugs, actually, because we were tight with money and whatnot, and I needed my fix, and nobody could help me, so I would go sleep with somebody for some pills or some meth. Not only in Wyoming, but across the United States, prescription drug abuse now tops, uh, I think, cocaine, methamphetamine, um, and one other drug combined in, in terms of death. Over two years ago, Three teenage girls were found dead in a Beaver Creek residence from a methadone overdose. Always tell her, you know, be good. You know, don't worry, Dad. And that's the last word she ever spoke to me. Riverton police say the majority of their search warrant arrests involve some form of substance abuse. We went to a restaurant. The girl at the counter just had white, powdery stuff around her nose. Fremont County doctors say snorting pills deteriorates the nasal cavity and causes harmful material such as talc to build up in the lungs, which can be fatal. Over in Lander, police say some residents are selling prescription drugs right out of their own homes. They have fraudulently obtained them from a uh, medical provider and uh, with those prescriptions and uh, then taken those prescriptions and sold them uh, for a profit. Police say they deal with several illegal prescription calls a week, but pill poppers in Fremont County say there is good reason for such high numbers. Riverton, you know, you can either go down by the Honor Farm or over over by uh, Walmart, you know, and just the reservation in general. I mean, I know of people where the grandma's selling weed, the mom and dad are selling weed, and the kids are selling weed. The Fremont County coroner says there were around 50 non-natural deaths in the county last year, and half of them were drug or alcohol related. But there are prevention efforts taking place. School programs, there are different things that are being done. Uh, people work on the health fairs that occur in the county. The primary abuse substance in many deaths is alcohol, followed by prescription drugs. Lindsay Adams, News 13 in Fremont County.